Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're starting a new set of videos on test your knowledge and the topic is going to be angular momentum. And yes, we're starting out with a bang. This is an interesting problem, a challenging problem. So what's happening? Well, we have a block of mass m that mentions 2a by 2a that's sliding with some initial velocity across a horizontal frictionless surface. It continues on until it hits an obstruction and then it tips over and gets to its final position where it's standing kind of straight up and that's where the velocity stops. Based upon that we should be able to determine what the initial velocity of the block was. Now we have a collision so we need to use conservation momentum and then we have motion after that where we go from kinetic energy to potential energy. So we have a two-part problem. The first part we use the conservation of momentum and the second part we use the conservation of energy. In the conservation of momentum we have to use angular momentum because the block will then rotate around. The center mass will rotate along an arc, a circular, a circular arc, so we have to use conservation of angular momentum. So the first part of the problem will be L initial equals L final and for the second part of the problem we have to use energy initial equals energy final. Now, what is the angular momentum of a block that's sliding along a linear path? It's kind of the same as a bullet coming along on a linear path with some velocity v and, and mass m. Notice that the angular momentum can be uh, calculated by multiplying the, mom the moment of inertia times omega and the moment of inertia when it's in this position is going to be mr squared and the angular velocity of that point right here so you can imagine that the bullet could have been in this circular path then we can say that the angular velocity is going to be v over r so in other words the moment of inertia or I should say the angular momentum of an object traveling in a linear path is going to be mrv so that's the same for a block we have the center of mass right here at, the, at the, the middle of the block, so that's a distance A above the floor. So we could say that it has some initial velocity, it has R will be A and mass will be M. So the initial angular momentum, whoa, hit the flag right here, the initial angular momentum can be written as M A V initial. And that's going to be equal to the angular momentum final, which is going to be the moment of inertia final times omega final. And that we have to figure out. Now, what will be the final moment of inertia as the block is tipping and the center of mass of the block is going along this arch in such a way that this distance here is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times a. All right, so we could say then that the moment of inertia final is going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the center mass of the block plus m d squared. So first of all, we need to find the moment of inertia of the block as it's rotating about the center mass. So that's going to be equal to 1 12th the mass times one side squared plus the other side squared would be 2a squared plus 2a squared. That's the moment of inertia of the block when it's rotating about its center mass. But now we have to take that point and make it rotate about the corner. So now we're moving at a distance of the square root of 2a. So we have to add to that the mass times the square root of 2a squared. So that's md squared. If we add that together, that will be the moment of inertia of the block as it's tipping about its corner. So this is equal to 1 12th m times 4a squared plus 4a squared, which is uh, 8a squared, plus m times this squared, that would be m times 2a squared. If I combine this, this is equal to 8 twelfths m a squared plus 2 m a squared which is one third, well it's actually two thirds, so this is equal to two thirds m a squared plus two m a squared, that will be six thirds plus two which is equal to eight thirds m 
a squared. So that's the moment of inertia final of the block as it's stepping about its corner. So now we can go ahead and plug that in here. So that's I final. But we're not quite ready yet because I don't know yet what the omega final is. At what speed does the block begin to rotate once it hits the obstruction? So that sliding hits the obstruction, begins to rotate. That's omega final after the collision becomes the omega initial in the second part of the problem where we're doing an energy conservation. So here what we can say is the kinetic energy initial, which is going to be the rotational kinetic energy, one half I omega initial squared. So that's the initial kinetic energy as it's beginning to tip, and that's going to equal the final potential energy, which is mg. H. Now the H here is going to be the difference of the center mass being in this position and the center mass being in that position. And here this will be I final. That will be the I as it's tipping about its corner. And this omega is going to be this omega right here. So what we mean that what we need to do then is solve this equation for omega initial and then plug that in here for omega final. And that will then give us the initial velocity. All right, continuing, <clears throat> continuing with that, so we have one half I final. Now I final is going to be equal to this, so we can go ahead and plug that in. So it's going to be one half times eight thirds m a squared times omega initial squared is equal to mg times the height, and the height is going to be equal to the square root of 2 minus 1 times a. So that's the difference between the center mass being here and the center mass being here. That's that small distance here. So this height is 1 times a, this is the square root 2 times a, so we're taking the difference. Notice we can cancel the m on both sides. So this m cancels with that m. And uh, let's simplify this. Oh, we have an A and an A, so this A will cancel out with this A. And remember, we have to solve for omega sub naught. So this is 8 over 6 or 4 over 3. So this becomes 4 over 3 A omega initial squared is equal to G times the square root of 2 minus 1. And so finally, we can say that omega initial is equal to 3 over 4 g over a times the square root of 2 minus 1. And that would be squared. And of course, omega sub naught is equal to the square root of 3 over 4 g over a times the square root of 2 minus 1. All right, now we have the omega that we can plug into here. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have V initial, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 1 over MA times I final, and I final is 8 over 3 MA squared times omega final, which is going to be the square root of 3 over 4 G over A times the square root of 2 minus 1. Now we're almost there. First of all, we cancel again. We have an M here and an M here that we can cancel. We have a two uh, A squared and an A, so this cancels that A. And notice, if I now bring the A in here, that becomes an A squared. I bring the 3 in here, that becomes a 9. I bring an 8 in there, it becomes a 64. So we can say that V initial is equal to the square root of a goes inside the radical, becomes 64 times 3, divided by the 3 goes in here, becomes 9 times 4. We have the A goes in here, becomes A squared, G over A, times the square root of 2 minus 1. And then we do one more simplification. We have the 3 becomes 1, the 9 becomes the 3, the 4 becomes 1, the 64 becomes a 16. The a becomes a 1, a squared cancels, and finally, we can say that the initial velocity is equal to the square root of 16 over 3 a g times the quantity of the square root of 2 minus 1. And that is the initial velocity of the block 
If it has that velocity, it will hit the obstruction, it will tip and stop at the maximum height at its corner. And of course, at that point, either it'll fall back down this way or it'll fall to the right. Or if everything is perfect, it'll, it'll stay just in that position. And that is how it's done.